Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Super short video. I thought I would show you how to upgrade a Rev4 motherboard here from an 8371 or an 8370, which is the NTSC one, the 8371 is PAL, up to an 8372A. So I've got the 8372A here. First thing we're going to do is use the PLCC extractor to remove the existing uh, Fat Agnes here, you know, the Super Agnes, whatever she's called, Lady Agnes on this one, or Fat Lady, I think it is. Oh, there we go, came out pretty easy there. Uh, just squeeze and pull, uh, you can see chips out, put that somewhere safe. What I'll do is I'll stick that straight into the ESD bag here. So I need to get this in correct with respect to pin 1. If you look super close, can you see? Um, there's a little notch there, you know, so the writing's that way, like that. The notch is here, that's pin 1. And on the board here, you can see pin 1 marking, so it has to go that way around. So, yeah, that's the first step, just fit the new chip, push it in, that's it. And there are three jumpers to deal with. The first one here, you can just about see there, just above Gary, J500. There's a little bridge in between the two pads. What we need to do is just cut that trace. So I'm just going to use a, a sharp knife here and just very carefully uh, cut that trace. I'll do that off camera. Once we've done that, we just need to toggle a couple of the other jumpers. I forget which ones they are, I'll find out in a sec. So the only other change here is J101, which is just next to the power connector here. And we just need to move that over to the other position. You know, you've got three pins there, uh, one, two, and three. You're moving it from two and three to one and two. As you can see, that's booting. I'm going to connect up a floppy drive just so we can boot this test. One interesting thing, it's going right down to the bottom there, which makes me think that because I've not got a piece of tape on one of the pins, it's in NTSC mode there. I think, I think that's right. I think I'm right there. So uh, I managed to just pop that chip back out in a sec, but nevertheless, we're at least booting up here. Yeah, so in this test there you can see, uh, and this is using the TF534 actually at the same time. So that's why we've got 4 meg of fast showing there, but the main thing is, can you see, chip, 1 meg. So that has worked, but, uh, let me zoom you out. Can you see, we're right down to the bottom of the screen here. That is a clue to me that it's 60 hertz. This is uh, running in NTSC mode. So I just need to go away and look at the pin out of the 8372A and find the NTSC PAL pin. And uh, I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to pop the chip back out, stick a little sliver of insulation tape down the side of it and pop it back in and that should resolve that. So the pin we're dealing with here is 41. So I need to uh, carefully uh, get the PLCC extractor in there again and uh, grip and carefully squeeze. There we go. Mostly squeezing but pulling same time so all the pins are okay on that so we need to isolate pin 41 from the edge of the socket that's what we need to do to put it in PAL so as you can see if you look at uh, pin 1 up here the top I've got a piece of insulation tape stuck on from the underside here it's just a sliver and it's masking off pin 41 so the way you can do this easily so say pin 1's up here you count around this way 32 is the last one on the left hand side so then you just do the 33, 34, 30, all the way up to 41 and mask off 41. But if you have more stuck on the underside, you'll see that as we push this into the socket, um, it will just hold in place like that and keep that one pin there isolated. I might try and do a comparison because that's still filling the screen, but uh, the text size here looks different. Before it was just stretched out a little bit. So yeah, I'm convinced that's in PAL mode now. So before I wrap this video up, the other thing you should do perhaps is actually stick a jumper on there. So I've got a six pin uh, thing here for just carefully snip that without cutting myself. Hang on, there we go. You can see I've uh, managed to get uh, two pins off. I'll solder that onto the board. We need to unblock the two solder holes that are there. Um, and we can uh, stick a jumper. In fact, I'll stick that on there now just to support that while I'm soldering it. But yeah, it just means that you can then toggle that, you know, on or off yourself, rather than having to have bits of solder and stuff on there. And it just makes it easy, certainly if you're testing other Agnuses. I've got a number of chips and things that I probably need to test in future, so it's a good idea. So that's the uh, solder points underneath J500. If we just uh, pull the iron in, and uh, I'll use, I'll perhaps add a little bit of fresh solder. I'm guessing these are drilled. I'm sure, they're, maybe they're not. I might have to drill them out or something, there might just be pads here. 
I might have to drill these, that might be uh, the next thing. I oh, know there's a hole there, look. Yeah, thank goodness for that. I thought for a minute I was going to have to uh, start drilling. But uh, yeah, Commodore kindly drilled those out in advance. Let's just get a bit of that bit of solder off there. Uh, but you can see the two holes there, so you know, obviously it'll be on the other side of the board. I just want to just see if it'll fit. Yeah, it might be a bit tight. Yeah, they're quite narrow those. Those are not the normal pitch of jumper, actually. Yeah, so what I would say is you've got to bend the pins in ever so slightly because the pitch is not the same as any of these other jumpers here. They're super close together. But as you can see, I've managed it. I just need to clean the uh, flux off this side and just make sure they are not shorting because they're awfully close. You know, there's like, I don't know, a millimetre in between the blooming things. So, yeah, I'll just measure on continuity test once I've just cleaned off the flux there. So, as I say, you do have to bend them in a little bit. Uh, you know together as you feed them in and then do the opposite once you've soldered it in place And you made sure you've not got a join just bend them at the top because they'll be like that They'll be sort of splayed outwards You've got to just bend the pins like that on the top side and then it, as you can see it looks fine the jumper fits I'll just measure we've not got short So my meters on continuity test. Let's just make sure we don't have a join. Yeah, we don't That's correct Yeah, it comes up with a little bit of resistance, but that's gonna be normal so I'll just give that a try because what I can do now is I can just change those two jumpers around and it should be back in, you know, 512k chip, 512k ranger. Yeah, so I've shorted that jumper out and I swapped the other jumper back over. And as you can see, chip half meg, slow half meg, so yeah, it's easily reversible. Um, before people scream at me, a small correction, yes, there's a jumper on the board for the NTSC palpin. So we masked this off and I think that was probably the easiest thing for me to do. If you don't do that, you might need to do a mod here. You might either need to cut the connection or, I don't know, feed something to one of these pads. I think ultimately, what we've isolated here, so the pin is not connected. Uh, and it may well be that that is how that's uh, wired. Let me just test that. Yeah, so if we just test that on continuity. Yeah, it's bridged across. And I'm guessing it's going to go to ground or VCC. If we just test from the uh, ground pin on this 7.4 series chip here. Yeah, it's going to ground. So, if you didn't have that, ground is going to go in there. Now, that might be correct. I don't know. Please post below. Because you can toggle between either ground, high, you know, high or low, or high impedance. I forget which switches it into NTSC and which switches it into PAL. I am guessing, with that there as uh, ground, I think this would be NTSC. I could be wrong. I'm just thinking about my experience when I've had Amiga 500s where I've upgraded the 8371 to an 8372A. Um, and the answer is to, I, th I think you've either got to feed 5 volts to it or uh, nothing at all. I think it's probably got an internal pull up. So the very fact we've got ground coming here, I think if you didn't stick the piece of tape on there, it would be in NTSC mode. And the only clue is, you know, is you, well, I'm not sure that we really saw any evidence of that in my video or not. Sometimes you can tell from the screen, um, you know, how it looks on your display. But more often than not, you might not notice a change in the display. Um, and it's only when you come to test certain games, I think some games you might find the sound frequency sounds wrong. Uh, and that'll be a clue that you've got it, you know, you've got it set incorrectly. Um, but yeah, so you could use J102 instead of this. You could cut, in this case here, the easy answer, rather than a bit of tape, is just to cut that trace there. But what I don't know is the consequences if you put an 8371 back in. Does that need to be bridged there with the ground going across? I'm not sure. In any case, you can see a couple of different ways of dealing with the NTSC PAL issue there. Something else I should point out, it says uh, PAL down there, I don't know whether I loaded this sys test when we had the Agnes, you know, configured the other way there, when that pin wasn't masked off, so I can't, I can't honestly uh, be sure. But I do know it's correct now. Uh, but someone's bound to ask, why would you want to, uh, you know, have a meg of chip? Well, the ROM I've got in here, if I just boot this without a floppy in, you will see it, it will boot okay. Um, and this is Kickstart 3.1. A Kickstart 3.1 does need one megabyte of chip, um, so that was the reason I actually went about upgrading this board. I was trying to do some tests on this board to help me diagnose an issue I'm having with a, a different card here, a different RAM card and stuff. Um, and the only way I can get it to boot is by upgrading the Agnes there to an 8372, so hopefully if I click somewhere, yeah you can see 938488 graphics man. So the upgrade has been a success. Anyway, it's only been a short video, I hope you found the video useful. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.